Hey, it's Matt, your average gamer, and for this video, we're going to be doing seven of the easiest builds to use in Elden Ring. All of these are incredibly easy to use. They make the game easy in general, and they're a lot of fun for people that are having a little bit more difficult time. Or if you just want to go through, get some areas very quickly, this is going to be an awesome setup for you. Seven of the very, very easiest builds to use in the game. For the first one, I'm going to go with the Shield and Heal build. That's the build using the Blasphemous Blade, the Fingerprint Shield, and Scholar Shield. You can block almost anything in the game, you rarely run out of stamina, and you can heal back any chip damage that you take. Now, there are a few bosses like Radagon here who can guard break you if they hit you enough. Something like Waterfowl from Melania can also guard break you, but it's very rare. The majority of bosses, I would say about 80% of them in the game, aren't going to break you with Scholar Shield on the Fingerprint Shield, and the Blasphemous Blade does fantastic damage and heals you consistently. And this is a build that I've beaten the game with, I think, two separate times, and it was easy both times. It's a fantastic build, especially if you're new trying things out. If you're somebody that just likes to explore, you can do a lot of damage with this build as well. And of course, you can block everything and you can heal a bunch too. And as you can see with Radagon here, the other thing is the Blasphemous Blade is something that's always going to do a lot of damage too. It's an awesome weapon in Elden Ring. It's one of the best faith weapons in the entire game, and being able to stack that with an awesome shield that can pretty much block anything makes for an unbelievable build. This is definitely on my favorite list of one of the favorite builds I've ever used because it is that easy to use. And now let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have the Blasphemous Blade plus 10, the Fingerprint Shield plus 25, we have a Staff for Scholar's Shield, we have the Shard of Alexander, Great Shield Talisman, Great Jar's Arsenal because this is a lot of weight, Ritual Swords Talisman, and then the Fire Tier and Defense Tier. Now let's get into stats. For stats, you have to go a lot into strength if you're going to use the Fingerprint Shield, and you want a little bit of faith so you can get some damage out of the Ash of War on the Blasphemous Blade, but overall, these are well-rounded 150 stats that can make the game a lot easier for you. This is one of the most fantastic builds to use for almost all of the bosses in the game. It really does work very, very well, and it is one of my favorites, too. And that's a really fun one too. And next up here, we have Rozier's build, which uses Glint Blade, Phalanx, Ash of War, which does ridiculous amounts of posture damage and can make the game a lot easier in the process. If you're somebody that loved Flame of the Red Mains and you used it a lot, this is definitely going to be your new replacement because it basically does the same amount of posture damage and has the same amount of usage. 30-something posture damage per Ash of War you can stance break very often. And since posture was nerfed across the board, this is one of those ones that was on touch and it works fantastically for those stance breaks. Be sure, by the way, to be facing whatever you're fighting with these and then trying to cast it again very quickly. And usually within about three of them, you're going to stance break. It is fantastic for stance breaking in general. And then you have a follow-up R2 as well if you're using this Ash of War. You can also use a dagger to enhance the critical hits too. Now let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have Rosier's Rapier plus 25. Any C will do. We have the Spellblade set on, the Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, we have the Dagger Talisman to increase those critical hits. We have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman as well. And then you're going to use the Magic Tier and then the Faith Tier for buffs or Defense Tier. That one's up to you. This is a really powerful setup, by the way. If you're looking for, like I said before, the replacement for Flame of the Red Mains, this is no doubt a great replacement. It has the same effect. Now, if you want to enhance the damage on the Glint Blades and then the weapon itself, just use Magic Affinity. Go for like the minimum dex or whatever and then go for high intelligence. And then we're going to go for a decent amount of Vigor as well for this build. At least 50 Vigor I'd recommend. Everything else really is up to you. That's a really easy one to use. Getting in those stance breaks too, it's a lot of fun getting those critical hits in general. And just a fun build to use, well-rounded build that you can get by the mid-game. And next up we have the Bolt of Grand Sacks, one of the easiest weapons to use. Does a lot of damage too. Let's get into details. The Bolt of Grand Sacks is really easy because it has a ridiculous amount of range and it has good damage as well, especially for first playthroughs or the beginning of new game plus cycles and whatnot. The Bolt of Grand Sacks has fantastic damage and it's that range that you can utilize it from a safe place too that makes it incredibly easy to use, understand, and get good damage out of. This weapon, by the way, fantastic for first playthroughs and even second playthroughs. does have a drop-off when you get to around Journey 4 or 5 or later, but even so, it does fantastic damage and has good range. Let's get into equipment. For this, we have the Bolt of Grand Sax plus 10. Any seal will do. I was using the Black Dumpling for a little extra damage. Ritual Swords Talisman. Godfrey Icon, which will boost this when it's charged. We have the Lightning Scorpion Charm to boost the Lightning Damage. Shard of Alexander. Lightning Tear. And then the Faith tier for buffs or Defense tier if you want to use that as well. 
This build, by the way, was done on level 200 character. I have two characters at level 200. I have seven characters currently, but generally speaking, as high dexterity as you can possibly get because that's going to boost the damage on the weapon art, which is what makes the Bolt of Grand Sack so good. You'll want good vigor in mind, of course, because it could be a little FP costly, especially if you're using the weapon art often. But once again, this is a fantastic weapon art, incredibly easy to use and makes the game a lot easier as well. Next up, full status effect build. This is a really fun one. Let's get into the details on this. Now, I didn't include the scavenger curve swords or any of the jump attack builds because they actually take a little bit of time to learn how to time all the jump attacks and to be able to hit especially smaller targets. But for this, I wanted to include the Anspear Rapiers because they are really easy to use. They build up a ton of status effects. You can put pretty much any Ash of War that you want to put on them. And you can basically wait out the clock by using Rot, Poison, you can even throw bleed in there. These are really easy to use just simply by spamming L1. You can do a ton of damage as well. They have 50 innate rot on them, and even with the nerf to dual status effects, they still build up rather quickly, as you can see the rot here, and you can throw in the poison on one and bleed on another. You can basically just melt the majority of bosses in Elden Ring with ease. Now let's get into equipment. For this one, we have two Anspear Rapiers. We have one with Seppuku on them, one with Poison Moth Flight. They have innate rod on them as well. Any seal will do. Knight's Cavalry Set, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. We have Melissa's Prosthesis, Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, and then the Thorny Tier. Use the Faith Tier for buffs as well. This one was also done on one of my test characters, which is level 200, I believe. It was done at 190 at this time, but I think eventually I upped it to 200. I think it's the same character that was on Bolt of Grand Sacks. But anyway, for this one, you want to go heavily into strength or dexterity. It's very much a quality weapon. However, in the video below, by the way, all the videos are in the description below, you can actually switch this to the Marius Executioner Sword with these same exact stats and use two entirely different builds, which is awesome. It's going to help you a lot too. Next up, Dark Moon Greatsword, one of the easiest weapons to use in Elden Ring, in my opinion. Fantastic weapon for a mage. I had to include the Dark Moon Greatsword in here for the fact that it has a good amount of range. It's not very FP costly since you can send out the beams for an entire minute after casting the Ash of War, and then it does 30-something stance damage per attack as well. Dark Moon Greatsword is probably one of the safest weapons to use as a mage, so if you're a mage and you've never tried this weapon, definitely be sure to try it out. Given the fact that you get frost damage, even if it is a little bit from a distance, you have that mid-range distance constantly, and you're always able to use it from a safe place while also not using much FP, because once again, you have a full minute to cast it. The Dark Moon Greatsword is one of the easiest weapons to use in Elden Ring. Really fun weapon, now let's get into equipment. Now for equipment, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword plus 10. Any staff will do here. We have the Spell Blade set on because it will boost this. Any seal, Dragon Crest, Great Shield, Talisman. Godfrey Icon will boost this because it's charged. Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm. We have the Magic Tier. Then you can throw in the Faith Tier for buffs as well. For stats, my mage is my other character that's at level 200. But the main thing here is you're just going to go for the minimum strength requirements and then go for as high intelligence as you can possibly get because that's going to boost the damage on that awesome Ash of War. Also, if you attack enemies close and you do get that buildup of frost damage, you can use something like Rikard's Raincore or the Magma Shot or any of it to reset the frost and then be able to frost proc again. That's another really easy one to use and it's definitely user friendly too. And next up, we have the Rivers of Blood, which obviously has that very spammable weapon art and still after the nerfs is very, very good for the majority of bosses in Elden Ring. The Rivers of Blood at launch was really overpowered. It was ridiculous. It was proccing bleed like crazy while doing massive damage. It's still good though, even after the nerfs and that spammable weapon art will do fire damage, physical damage, and a good amount of bleed buildup as well. The Rivers of Blood is probably one of the easiest weapons to use in the game, and you can even just spam L2 if you feel like it. It's an awesome weapon. Let's get into equipment. For equipment, we have the Rivers of Blood plus 10. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, because it scales with Arcane, so why not? The White Mask on, Shard of Alexander, Melissa's Prosthesis, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, then we have the Thorny tier, you can throw in the Fire tier for more damage as well, or Faith tier for buffs. Now for stats at 150, your main two stats are going to be Dexterity and Arcane. Those are the main two that you want to focus on, and you want a good amount of Vigor as well too, and obviously Mind because it is a little bit FP costly. The Rivers of Blood is definitely something that's very, very easy to use, as we all know. And next up is the Wing of Astal, one of my favorite sidearms as a mage and one of the easiest weapons to use in Elden Ring. Let's get into the details. 
The Wing of Astol's Ash of War Nebula is an awesome Ash of War to use. It does ridiculous amounts of damage and it's very easy to use too, quick to cast and very easy to buff too because it's pure magic damage because it can be boosted by Terra Magica and the Magic Scorpion Charm, of course the Shard of Alexander. You can get a ton of damage out of it and it's very, very quick to cast, easy to buff. It's just an awesome weapon in general. Very, very easy to use and understand too, and it does a lot of damage. And the Ash of War is really impressive as we talked about. This is really one of the ones where if you're a mage and you haven't tried the Wing of Astol yet, you absolutely have to try the Wing of Astol. It's a ton of fun to use too, and it can shred the majority of bosses in the game. Let's get into equipment. For this one, we have the Wing of Astol plus 10. Any seal will do. We were using the Staff of Loss, but it really doesn't matter as far as that goes. The Spell Blade set will boost this. Ritual Swords Talisman. Magic Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and of course the Magic Tier, and if you want to throw in the Faith Tier for buffs, or the Defense Tier as well. Now this is on my Mage, which again is one of the two characters I have at level 200, but the main thing here is the minimum requirements on the weapon, and then once again, like the Dark Moon Greatsword, since the Ash War scales mainly with Intelligence, you're going to get that stat as high as you possibly can to get the maximum amount of damage out of it. Wing of Astol is a really fun weapon to use, so definitely be sure to check that weapon out, and definitely be sure to check out all these weapons in general. All these builds in general are going to make the game a lot easier for you, so if you're looking for easy builds, this was something I put together just for that. By the way, the Discord is also in the link below, so be sure to join that. There's a whole bunch of people on there. It's been a ton of fun. I made a Patreon if you want to support the channel even further. It was a ton of fun doing builds like these, doing lists like this. Hopefully this helps. In the meantime, though, if you love From Software games or you love overpowered PvE builds in general and enjoying Elden Ring a lot, be sure to check out all of the awesome Elden Ring content that's on my channel right now. There's a ton of builds on there. Thanks for watching. Be sure to sub, and as always, I will catch you guys there.